Anybody else want to deal with this? Because, because the curse. That's, no, no, not only a curse. Jesus did everything to the letter. Yes? But you see, when the time came for his test to be on the cross, yes? He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He didn't say my father. Remember at this point. He said, my God, my God. Elahi, Elahi. Lama sabachthani. He speaks in Aramaic, his language. And you know what, the, what is uh, Elahi? And th the same exact term is used in the Quran for God Almighty. Yes? And he says, Elahi, Elahi, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Can you imagine God forsaking a righteous person, a messenger, a chosen Messiah? It's not something that is in sync with what God would do. What does he say in Isaiah 52? Show me. Read it to me. Go on. Go on. Read it to me in Isaiah 53, where he says he'll be forsaken. Because if... Yeah, it's, not in, it's not in Isaiah 53. But what I'm saying is that if that is the case, then God would be contradicting himself because he says, I do not forsake the righteous people. How can God be a curse? I don't understand. The Satan, is, the Satan is a curse, not God. But sin was on him. That's why he's cursed. So he cannot be God then. You just said sin cannot be in the presence of God. The fact that sin was on Jesus proves that he's not God. Because he died to take the sin. So that's his, I mean, you should know this. So if he died to take the sin, why is he called a curse? I don't understand. Why is he forsaken? Because curse cannot be in the presence of God. And to be cursed is to be distant from God. Who's cursing him, by the way? Who's cursing God? Who's cursing God? Yeah. No, he took, I mean, the sin is... No, no, who, is, who said Jesus is a curse? Who? Is it God himself? Uh, because they say he was on the, he was hanged on the, on the cross, it's cursed. Yeah, according to whom? Uh, I forgot, I'm not a, uh, According to God? Yeah, but uh, no, I said according to who, uh, like to which chapter or which verse? No, no, I'm not asking you which chapter. Yeah. Yes, I'm asking according to whose statement? I believe so. Anyone who hangs on a cross or on a tree? I believe so, yeah, according yes. to God, yes. It's actually mentioned in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, why he's cursed. But the thing is, I'm not asking why he's cursed. I'm asking who cursed him. And if it is God who cursed him, then he cannot be a righteous person. Simple as that. You see, this is unfortunately the way Jesus has been portrayed in the Bible. It's not fair. It's not fair for someone who would actually be willing to sacrifice his life and then yet he's cursed. Doesn't make sense. Wasn't that planned by God anyway? So if it was planned by God, why is he calling him a curse? I don't understand. Could the father take the sin? Could the father, he could if he wanted, but that wasn't Could the father die? Uh, if that was the plan, he could. Okay. Could God die even though God says that he's immortal? Uh, it depends on the definition of no, no, what this death means. Because death means that uh, if you're describing it as a physical death or an eternal death. Okay, I'll give you the passage, you tell me which death is talking about. It's in First Timothy chapter 6, verse number 16. It says, He alone is immortal who lives in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. So the term where he says he alone is immortal, what do you understand by that? God is immortal. Yes. What does that mean, immortal, in that context? No, that's eternal. The term immortal has a specific meaning. What does it mean? Exactly. So it says there very clearly, God doesn't die. Would God lie to you? We're, we're coming to that. If God says that he does not die, Yes? What does that mean, according to you? I mean, that can mean uh, many things. I mean, Give me one. A human, the body is, the death is, is body. You, I mean, Sorry, you want to step here if you don't mind? You want to be in the camera, I just want to pick up the, your audio, that's all. But if you want to be in the camera, we have no issues. Yeah, you can come a bit more closer. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never done this before. So yeah, yeah. You're doing quite bad. You're doing much better than the other guy. Okay. <laughs> so you can come here. You're welcome. No problem. What's your name? John. John. I'm Hashim. Yeah. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. So, yeah. When he says that he alone is immortal, you know the term immortal uh, in that context. When he says that he alone is immortal, that means nobody else can be immortal. Accept him. Uh, we're talking now about God. Yes. Which, which chapter? Uh, First Timothy, chapter six, verse okay. sixteen. Okay. So he says he alone is immortal, and yeah. he is the only one who is immortal. Nobody else. Yeah. 
Yes? Now, in what context would that be true? Is it the death, the physical death, or the spiritual death? No, it's his existence. Yeah, he doesn't, he's always will exist. Yeah, we are not talking about his eternity. Obviously, he's eternal, yeah, we know. But you see, the term immortal means not subject to death. Means yeah. he will not die. Uh, it means as well, it always will be existing. Yeah, if he's immortal and eternal, yeah. that's obvious. Yeah. But the thing is, the important thing here, the term is not eternal, the term is immortal. Yes. And the term immortal means? Doesn't die. Exactly. Yeah. So, because God the Father is the only one, according to the Bible, who did not die or will ever die. Yes? So only he, it yeah. says he alone is immortal. That actually excludes everyone else. Yeah. Yes? Do you agree? Yeah. Does it exclude Jesus as well? No. Why? Did because Jesus die or not? No, that's the body. The, de the, de the body. The, okay. Uh, Maybe now is a good time to define what is death because that was one of your questions, yeah? yeah. How do you understand? What do you understand by the term death? I mean, it depends on the context. I mean, uh, this is the context. First Timothy six. 16. I mean, uh, Jesus did Jesus die? Yes, as a human being, as a body, he died. Uh, but as a spirit, he didn't. Okay. How many persons were Jesus? One or two? Jesus. How many persons was he? Jesus is one. Okay. So He's which? One of the so if I ask you the question, which yeah. person died on the uh, on the cross? Uh, Jesus died on the cross. No, no. Which person died? Which person? The son. So from the fa from the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, yeah. the second person of the Trinity died. Yes. Do you agree? Yeah, the reincarnation, the physical okay. body. Yeah. Did the Father ever die? No. Okay. Did the Holy Spirit ever die? No. no. So who is like the one? Because they were not physical. They didn't yeah. materialize into physical. Now, uh, I will give you the definition yeah. of death. You tell me if you agree or disagree with it. So death normally means, uh, even in this context and the context of the crucifixion, it means separation of the soul from the body. Yeah. Yeah? Did that happen to Jesus? Yes. Did that happen to Jesus? Okay, so he died. Yes. Yes? Now, that means he is not immortal. Based on 1 Timothy 6.16, he is not immortal. We are not talking about, that doesn't mean you cease to exist. It doesn't mean that. So if anybody has that understanding, please discount it. Because that is not what I defined it as. And neither that uh, does it mean so in the Bible in this context. So that means just separation of the soul from the body. Yes? Did that happen to Jesus? I'll go with your definition. Is that your no, no, you can, you, you can disagree with me if you think it's, it's wrong. Yeah, because death, uh, I mean, as I said, uh, depends on the scenario you're using it. So if you're using it now, Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. Yes, it's the separation, uh, the, the death of the body, the separation of the spirit yeah. from the body. I'll go with that. Yes. Okay. So if he died, it implies that he is not immortal. But that's the very basic. That's very very basic. basic. He can manage, I'm sure. Because now we're talking about the dimension, the physical dimension, rather than a spiritual dimension. You know, when, you know Jesus was with God. Yeah, yeah, but we are not talking about that. We are talking about his death on the, during the crucifixion. Yeah, yeah. You see, if you say that one person died, and it is normally a person who dies, the flesh is not a person. Do you know that? Yeah, the, but, flesh, yeah. the, flesh by, the flesh is actually a nature. Yeah. Divinity is a nature. His uh, humanity is a nature, which is the flesh and the body you're talking about. Yeah. Yes? So these are his natures. We are talking about the personhood. Mm -hmm. The person, did he die or not on the cross? I mean, that's a very... Uh, I mean, what do you mean by the person? Now we're, so we're going to... You actually well, answered that question already. I, I asked you a minute ago. Yeah. I asked you which person died. And you said the son. You said the sec you agreed that it was the second person of the Trinity. Are you going to retract that now? Are you no, still... No, I'm trying to follow up because you were using lots of words. I'm trying to, to uh, get... To, I use you know, three, three yeah. terms. I use the term immortal. I use the term uh, death. Yeah. And then I use the term nature, yeah. which is the two natures of Jesus. The human yeah, nature the and the divine and the, uh, the flesh or yeah. the, uh, the human nature. So you see, we are not talking about the nature. Because you see, when a person dies, they do not say, oh, look at this kind nature died. Or they don't say that uh, this person who is very harsh, yeah. he died. You see what I mean? They say the person died. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. So if I ask you a clear question, from the three persons of the Trinity, who died for you? The, the three persons. So she's saying of the Trinity, nobody died. So who died? Jesus was eternally God. I'm just asking you who died, that's all. Okay. Is the human nature a person? Yes. Okay. Is the divine nature a person? Yes. So how many persons is Jesus? It's the same divine nature. Two persons? The same divine nature of 
nature, I'm which came as a man. No, no, no. no you said the human nature. Okay, you know, that's the reason I don't want to talk to you guys. No. Because you come and interrupt. Instead of having a dialogue, you, you come and interrupt. So I'm going to ignore you guys and I'm going to back, go back to John. So, John, based on, we know that there are two natures of, of Jesus Christ, yeah? We know that these two natures are not two persons. Because that would, that would actually be, the, it's called a heresy of Nestorianism, which he's appealing to. It's called a heresy. Do you see? Why is it a heresy? Because anyone who believes that there is two persons, yes, inside Jesus, he's a heretic. Guys like him, yes? So that's the reason. Yeah, that's why I'm, I, I know you don't agree with them, and I'm glad you. Yeah, so I'm glad you don't agree with these heretical views of two persons. Okay, so what I'm saying is that if we ask you which person died, yes, I think you should get the point that we don't want to talk to you. So go and disturb somebody else. Well, I have a right to talk to him without you disturbing me. Well, if you say two persons, that is a heresy. Do you not know that? No, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, what is the heresy of Nestorianism? Let's see if you know that. I don't care because you don't know. They don't know the basics. This is the basics of the church doctrines, and that is the reason. You see, why do they come and disturb? You know why? Because they know they know that they cannot have a discussion which is rational, which is clearly from the Bible. They cannot have that. So what they do is they insult. Okay, anyway, the point? the point here is that Jesus, if he's one person, and that is a person which died, then that he cannot be immortal. That's all I'm saying. And that goes against the nature of God Almighty. I see, I see, I see what you're trying to say. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, death, immortality, uh, you're, you're using different words. Second? It's, it's the terms you're using. Yeah. Sorry, guys, can we move a bit there? Let's take down the camera as well. It's the terms you're using. I'm not speaking. I'm using the same terms that are in the Bible, my friend. I'm not using anything different. So the term immortal is in 1 Timothy 6.16. The fact that he died is in Romans 10, 9, where he died and he was raised by God. Yes, so yes. these are the terms I'm using from the Bible. Yeah, I'm not using any specific means. The only time I use uh, certain terms like the Nestorian uh, heresy, that is actually the, the church which defined it. So I'm using that, which is not in the Bible, which is outside the Bible. But it's still very much uh, defined by the church, what this heresy is. So, so you're having a problem understanding how, how uh, uh, Jesus, the Son, died? No, I'm not having a problem. I'm saying if you insist that Jesus died, then you have to acknowledge that he is not immortal. You can't have it both ways. Either he died or he did not die. No, because yeah, where is Jesus for us? Where is now? Where is Jesus now? No, no, that's Jesus it. Well, sitting on the right yeah. Hand of As a Muslim, we believe yeah. that he never died, yeah. so that's why he's still alive. So for us, he's so he's going to come in the second coming. Yeah. So we, as Muslims, we believe that as well. Yeah, yeah. So we don't believe he was either crucified or even killed. Yes. Yeah. In fact, he ascended to God Almighty, I, I, and I, then I in the uh, before the end times, he will come again. So what I'm saying is that if the Christians are consistent with that approach, they will realize that Jesus cannot be God. Because he he died. You see what I mean? And God doesn't die. It's as simple as that, my friend. Yes, I understand. It's just the terms you're using. That's I'm using the term that's used in the Bible. Okay. That's all. Uh, but for us Christians, I know you, you mentioned about consistency. Well, uh, for us, just to, to uh, explain, Jesus is immortal, always existed, always will be. Now, how to solve this uh, thing that he entered creation and he died? No, you said Jesus is immortal. Can you back that up? Can you substantiate it? You made a claim. Can you substantiate it from the Bible? Because you already admitted that he died. How can he be immortal? An immortal being, by definition, does not die. Yeah, different kind of death. Death. Different kind of death. Okay, there is two kinds of death. Let me. Let, let me show you the two kinds of death. I have to go and do a proper research. Yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. Do a proper death. research. Yeah. In the Bible, there is a spiritual death and there is a physical death. Correct. When it comes to spiritual death, it is not only God who is immune to that. Okay? It's also all the believers according to the Bible. Yeah, it's separation from God. Yeah, because yeah. according to your Bible, it says that anyone who believes in God or accepts Him will not perish, will not die. Yes? So, your, so as far as spiritual death is concerned, God is not the only one who is unique to this particular uh, phenomenon. Okay. However, when it comes to physical death, 
there is only one who can claim this attribute of immortality. You see what I mean? And that is not Jesus. No, but do you agree with that? That is not Jesus. No, no, I, I don't agree with that. So you, you uh, somehow believe Jesus did not die? Because you can't have it both ways, my friend. Because as soon as you say he died, yeah. then you have to admit that he is not immortal. But you ignored what happened just after that. Yeah. Slow, I'm hiding, bro. <laughs> but you just ignored what happened straight, up, straight after the death. Straight after the death, he has been risen. Even then? So it doesn't... It, well, okay. uh, death, by our definition... Sh shall I tell you life. why that proves that he is not God? But can I say something? Yeah, you go on. Die physically, you don't get risen again. No, no, we do. God will resurrect everyone one day. No, but, everyone. But, but, Yes, All you're talking about is the time. Jesus resurrected in three days, according that's to you. Others will resurrect some other time. That's correct. That's, yes. that's the by the way, there were people in the Bible who were risen by Elijah from dead, who were risen by Elisha from dead. Yes, in the Old Testament. If you don't know, you can check it up. It's in 2 Kings, where even the bones of Elisha were able to raise a person back to life. Yes? So there are people who have risen from dead. It's not just Jesus Christ. So if you're using that as a... Um, as your, what do you say, uh, proof and evidence that he's God, then it's not, it's not God. Well, Look, I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, I, I, I don't know that one. Probably heard it, uh, or let me, context. let me give you one point about the resurrection. I don't know the context of it and what really happens in order to compare it to Jesus. Uh, I'll give you the context if you want. Yeah, yes. So Elisha, during the time of Elisha, what happened was uh, actually he had died and he had been, uh, uh, he had been buried already. So what happened, Elisha, not Elijah, Elisha. Okay. Okay. Which is not Elia, John the Baptist. No, no it's not. Oh, no, Old Testament. Sorry. Yeah, it's in the Old Testament. It's in two kings. I forgot the exact reference, but you can find it. So what happened was the Jews were going to bury a man who had died. So they wanted to bury him. But when they saw that raiders had, were coming, raiders, you know, they were coming to raid. They were coming yeah. to pillage and raid. So when they saw them, I think it was the Moabites or something like that. When they came, these, these people, what they did was, they took the body, the, the, the corpse, and they put it in the, uh, in, in the tomb of Elisha. Okay. Now, Elisha's bones, when they touched this dead man, his corpse, he got life and he stood up. Okay. So you see, the dead bones of Elisha were able to give life to a dead man. Okay. And I think that is even a bigger miracle than Jesus raising from the dead. I will, I will go with this. Yeah, go on. So what I'm saying, my friend, is that if Jesus is able to die and if he's able to resurrect it proves that he's not immortal because death and resurrection do not apply to someone who doesn't die do not apply to an immortal being let me repeat that again death and resurrection only apply to mortals do not apply to people who do not die do not apply to immortals because an immortal person doesn't die in the first place. So there's no question of him rising from the dead. Yeah, but, but you see, but in the case of Jesus, no, no, he, a resurrection. What is resurrection? Yeah, but that's, that's your definition. I don't agree with it. I'm John, it's not true. what is the definition of resurrection? I don't know. Rising from dead. Yes, I mean, okay? you can describe it in a simple way and then more complex well, you can, way. You can make it complicated if you want, but yeah. you'll still come to the same conclusion. That resurrection means to rise back from being dead. Yes. Yes? yes. Did Jesus die? Yes. yes. Did Jesus resurrect? Yes. Did the Father die? No. Did the Father resurrect? No. So who is immortal from the two? It's clear. It's the Father. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But it's not so why are you fighting your your natural inclination towards the truth? What you're doing is you're fighting it. Don't fight it. Absolutely not. Acknowledge the truth when you see it. No, no, I can see your point. But what I'm saying is it's a weak argument. Why is it weak? It's very strong. No, it's shallow. It's okay, which part of it is shallow and weak? Go on. Tell me which part. The, the trying to interpret the, what is immortality, what is death. This is, I'm not saying I'm going by your definition 100%, but you can expand a lot on these terms. Why didn't you ask me where I got the definitions from? Well, I can ask you if you want. Yeah, so I got it from the Strong's Concordance, which is a Christian kind of uh, dictionary in order for you to understand every word in the Bible. Okay, okay so it defines every word. Yeah. So it's not my definition, my friend. Yes, yeah. you can go and look at the Greek term. I think it's called Anastasia or Anastasia or something like that. Mm. I might be mispronouncing it. That is what immortal means. And this is defined as someone 
who is not subject to death, or someone who doesn't ex doesn't perish or doesn't experience death. You perish, see what I mean? Perish. That's now, you see, we, and I, I I made it very yeah. clear that death does not mean cease to exist. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. So I'm using the correct definition based on the Christian text, not yeah. my definition. Yeah. So if you think I'm making it up, please go home and check it. Okay, I will check All it. All right. But, but anyway, look, yeah. from our natural uh, understanding of the terms, and these are simple terms, death, resurrection, crucifixion, um, immortal. These are everyday terms. They are not some, what do you say, special terms only known by the scholars. Yeah, they are simple. These are simple terms, and based on the context, God is telling you that he doesn't die. If God himself is defining, who are we to define God? So God defines himself. And he, he tells us not everything about him, but there are certain things which he tells us about him in order that we recognize him. Yeah. And one of them is the fact that he is immortal. And I gave you the reference. Yes. 1 Timothy 6.16. Yeah. It's also in 1 Timothy 1.17. Yes? So there are quite many references in the Bible. Yeah, I agree with that. Yes. There's another important attribute of God. It's called omniscience, which means all-knowing. Okay. Do you believe Jesus was all-knowing? Do I believe Jesus as all-knowing? Was he all-knowing? Did he know everything like God should do? Uh, we don't know everything actually from the Bible about Jesus. No, no, no. I'm not asking if you know everything about Jesus. Based on what he informed us of in the Bible yeah. and based on the passages in the Bible, yeah. do you believe that Jesus is all-knowing? Okay, I think I have a hint where you want me to go. Because you probably will want me to go to when he didn't know the hour. Yeah, that is one of them. Yes. There's another one as well, quite significant. The fig, yeah. the fig tree, do you remember? When he was hungry, he approached the fig tree. The fig tree. Yes, yeah, yes. so when he was hungry, he approached the fig tree yeah. and he realized there's no figs and he curses the fig tree. Yeah. And the fig tree withers and dies within days or sometimes even immediately, I think. I believe that Jesus is all-knowing. That's true. If he wants to know, yes. But if he... What do you mean if he wants to know? If you know something, yeah. then you know it. But, uh, you can't decide and say, I don't know. You would be lying if you did that. It's a complex thing, but I would say... It's very simple, my friend. I would say Jesus is all-knowing. I would say that. So why did he not know the fixed season, which even a farmer at this time would know? Uh, you know, you cannot, I cannot explain that particular, but I know for sure he did know that. He didn't know. He approached it. Yeah. The reason he cursed the fig tree is because he didn't see any fruit on it. That's correct. You see what I mean? Yeah. But this is common knowledge even for a, I, 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 even for a farmer at that time. I remember it. I think I can comment on that. Okay, please. Fig tree because, please do. Yes, he wanted to imply that we the people, we have to be fruitful at all times. Not in a particular season. And he mentioned that... that wait, wait, you have to be fruitful? All times. All times. Yeah, we have to be good people. Not in a particular season or hour. Not for so why curse the tree? You could have said that. Yes, but, but that's a clear. Why curse a perfectly fruit-bearing tree which people could have benefited from? No, but it wasn't fruit-bearing. It wasn't bearing because it wasn't the season. But, I mean... That's and, and guess who made that law? God himself made the law that the fix tree or any tree doesn't bear fruit outside the season. Yeah. So the, no, no, the, what was the fault of the tree which was following the laws of nature or the laws of God to be, uh, to yeah, be specific? Yeah. See what I mean? I agree with that. So that, that argument doesn't actually wash. It doesn't, it's not a rational argument to say that he wanted to uh, teach a lesson. He could have just said it like he says all the time. He gives parables, you know? Correct. Yes, he doesn't need to kill people to give parables. Yes. yes? Remember about uh, the pro uh, the prodigal son and everything? Yes? And about uh, people who do not obey him, they will be killed and so on. Yes? In Luke, the proverb about the king and uh, the son and those people who do not obey him. Anyway, where, where he says that I've not come for peace, but I've come to bring a sword. You see what I mean? So he was giving... He was giving uh, analogies to you, he could have done the same thing. Why destroy a perfectly good fruit, fruit bearing tree, which, which by, by its own conditioning did not bear fruit outside the season? Why I'm questioning God why he does this thing in a certain way? Well, it's, it's up to him. It's not up but anyway, the, the passage, the same thing out of by the way, the passage did say yeah. that Jesus felt hungry and he approached a tree. Yeah. So we already know the reason why he came to the tree. Yeah. It wasn't to teach people lessons. He came to the tree, the fig tree, yeah. because he was hungry. Yeah. Remember, if a God wants to eat yeah. food, yes, it can just snap 
He can just snap his finger, maybe the fruit will bat tree. Yeah, See what I mean? Why did God need to curse the tree? I don't understand. No, he just tell us why he did it. Because it wasn't bearing fruit. He was hungry, he approached the tree, there was no fruit on it, he got angry and he cursed it. Very well, simple. As, as a Christian, as I'm nobody uh, interpreted this or explained this verse to me, I straight away absorbed what the message is. The message is we have to be fruitful all the time. We have to be good people all the time. Not in a particular month or a particular time of the year. Otherwise, no, but that's, that's, Jesus did not come for that message. Jesus came to the tree. If you want, open the passage and look. That's the message I got from No, no, but you're ignoring the context of the, of the passage then. Because Jesus approached the tree because he was hungry. What does it make difference if it's hungry or not? It tells you the reason he came to the tree. So the Bible only is putting us just to show us that Jesus was hungry? No, 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 the Bible gave you the message why Jesus went to the tree. Yeah, but because there is a big message from this, not just because he's, not because he's hungry. We know he's hungry, he can be hungry. Because so, so, so let me get this right. Are you saying that all Christians are fruitful 24 hours a day? No. no. So if you guys are not fruitful 24 hours a day, yeah. based on your interpretation of that passage, yeah. then Jesus will curse you. Uh, Am I right? Yeah, possibly. I mean, look, because, uh, <laughs> are you saying possibly Jesus will curse you because you're not fruitful 24 hours a day? I mean, a man got to sleep, right? A man got to eat. Yes, a, man, a man has yeah. needs. Yeah. So you, you, no one can be fruitful in that sense 24 hours a day. No, if we have a sin, actually we are somehow cursed because sin separates us from God and that's a curse by definition. So we have to be fruitful, yes, and that's why we cannot achieve that. Okay. That's why Jesus died for our sins and we say, you know what, you cannot be fruitful 24 hours. Exactly, my point. So, so is he going to curse you if you're not fruitful 24 hours? No, but thanks God, I believe. So then there is a possibility that there are times when you are not fruitful and there are times when you are fruitful, which is exactly what the tree was doing. So you don't learn any lesson from the tree then? Even based on your analogy. I, I learned the standards of God that he wants from me. And because I'm short of those standards, okay. I'm okay. I'm now, I'm what is now, the, my sin is erased by his blood on, on the cross. That's, that's the other issue with Christians. Are you saying that the only way you can be forgiven is by human sacrifice? Uh, the only way I can be, depends on the, on the, I mean, every sin has to be punished, right? Why? Why can't God forgive? Because he wouldn't be just. Why would he not be just? Because if he can forgive, where is justice? I mean, if I... If I Do you know what forgiveness means? I mean, it has to, I mean you have to pay for, uh, for your sin. No, forgiveness doesn't mean you don't have to pay for it. Forgiveness means you don't have to pay for it. For example, if you borrowed money from your brother and your, br your brother tells you that I forgive you your debt, that means you don't have to pay him back. That is what forgiveness means. If your brother says, can you pay me in kind? That means, I don't know, pay him, I don't know, give him a car or do some work for him or something. That's called payment in kind. That is still a payment though, it's not forgiveness. Are you telling me that God is unable to forgive? God can forgive, of course, but he is, I mean, why, why is this all sacrificial law that has been instructed through all the Old Testament? Even with why, the sacrificial why, laws, why he doesn't it, forgive you, yeah, why would it, which are... You know, don't sacrifice, I'll forgive you. No, the, the sins, listen, you need to understand something. I'm talking about Jesus, who is a man. Do you believe in human sacrifice? Do I believe in humans? I don't believe in human sacrifice. So who was sacrificed on the cross? No, it was Jesus, but that's not... Was Jesus a human? Well, uh, no. I it's mean, either God's sacrifice or human sacrifice. Either way, it's a catch-22. It's, it's the perfect sacrifice. I wouldn't say it was a human sacrifice. Okay, no. so who, who died? God or a human on the cross? It was the... Oops. Okay. No, it's not oops. I'm just trying <laughs> I was to going to say something. I said, no, no, no. It's a catch-22, my friend. It's, I'm trying to put it together. Okay, put it, it together. Go on. It was... Uh, uh, the temple, of, which is, uh, to give you the right answer, I don't want to give you a wrong answer. My friend, do you agree that Jesus was human or not? I would say, sorry, sorry you said, sorry for the slack. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I just want to give you the right thought. Can God, can God be sacrificed by his own creation? No, it was the body of the Christ that was the, the, the blood of it. Yeah. Which is human, <laughs> which is human, yes. thank you. So it was a human sacrifice. No, no, There's no way out of it. One person sacrifice. One yeah, one person. That one person was a human, my friend. Oh yeah. That part, so yeah. it was a human sacrifice, right? Maybe you don't like the term human sacrifice, no, but that well, is just denial. Well, if Jesus come as uh, another as a, uh, being, as another let's okay, say. Okay, if he comes as an alien, that will be an alien sacrifice. But right now we are talking about Jesus <laughs> as a human. 
So it's a human sacrifice. Yeah, if you want to, yeah, but it's not a human. It's, it's, it's not human? Whatever he is. What do you mean whatever? Let him, let him to say God. Let him go do what? That way. So whatever he is, was at that time, that's a sacrifice. Like, human could be anybody. You're, you're trying to imply that. But I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about okay. Jesus. So yeah, if we just stick that with Jesus and the human only with Jesus, yes. It's not like you're going to grab someone from the... John, why are you struggling with a simple matter? So was it a human sacrifice or not? It was the perfect uh, human uh, sacrifice. Yes. Finally, thank you. You know what that is according to the Old Testament? It's a pagan ritual. No, uh, that's what I'm telling you. If you, if you sacrifice people, I'm telling you only... He was a person. Yeah, yeah, but only about this particular moment and this particular... Because Jesus, he took a body and he was the perfect sacrifice in a way that he didn't do any sin. That doesn't matter. He was, he was still human, my friend. Yeah, 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 but he was not, yeah, yeah. You're making generalizing out of a single thing. You cannot generalize. No, no, I'm not generalizing. I'm giving you the specific. Yeah. I'm giving you a specific person yeah. of a specific time yeah. and a specific nature. So, that's not vegan. so don't tell me I'm making a general statement. But I'm making a very specific statement yeah. only with regards to Jesus Christ. And Jesus yes. Christ, according to you, was a human who died. Correct. And and without this human sacrifice, you can never be forgiven. Am I right? Without this sacrifice. Yeah. Without this human sacrifice. Human. I have without to. Why you don't sacrifice. like the term human? You said it's a perfect human sacrifice. Just now you said that. Yeah. So why can't I use that same term? This perfect human sacrifice, you cannot be forgiven until it happens. Yeah. Am I? Do you agree with me? Because you used it to generalize it as being pagan. How am I generalizing? When I'm telling you that this particular sacrifice yeah. was a human sacrifice. If anyone sacrifices as a human, is a, is a pagan ritual. Yeah, correct. But Jesus, Jesus was an exceptional... You know, it, it, it defeats the purpose of what, G, what God said in the Old Testament. He would rebuke people who would sacrifice to, the, to God their children, human children, yeah? I understand you. And he would, he would actually say, this did not even cross his mind to advocate such a thing. And then it became your most important doctrine that without that, you cannot even be forgiven. The, the thing which is most, most hated to God, that it wouldn't even cross his mind, became in the New Testament, the only thing which can save you. You see the, you see the complete U-turn? I don't see, no. You don't see? Then you should go home and observe this video. You're making a general rule out of one single... I didn't make the rule, by the way. It was God who made the rule in the Old Testament. No human sacrifices. It wasn't me. Let's it was God. You keep saying, I make the rule. It wasn't let's me. Agree to disagree. No, let's I agree to agree with what the Bible actually stated in, in the Old Testament. No, that no human sacrifices were allowed. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but, you, you're but in the New Testament, <laughs> the only way you can be saved is by this well, human I sacrifice. Tell you, in the New Testament, Jesus is described as the Lamb of God, which is the Lamb of Sacrifice. So, it's not the human. It's, he's the Lamb of God at that particular... If he's moment. the Lamb of God, yeah. then wh whom is he sacrificed to? He's sacrificed... To whom? Well, he's... Uh, whom he, whom is he paid a ransom to? Like the way Abraham yeah. wanted to pay a ransom to God, yes? And there was a, a ram which was uh, replaced, Correct. substituted for a human being. Yes? You see how God didn't want to uh, sacrifice a human being, his son. Yeah. So he replaced him, substituted him with a ram. And it was a ransom paid to whom? To God. But Jesus, according to his God, whom is he paying to? I mean, the payment to God or not to God. This is another oops moment. Another catch 22. Absolutely not. Absolutely. Let's see you get out of this one. Go on. Whom is it a ransom to? Go on, answer that. Well, that's something I'm trying to explain because it's not properly explained. Please do. So is it, a, is it a payment to God or is it a payment? Well, it's a payment in blood. Yeah, but to I whom? Know, I know, I know. But no, no, it has lots of philosophy. I'm trying to understand. Go on. Philosophers uh, rationalize. It could be a payment to God, but not only a payment to God. Then who else, if not only God? Well, okay, I tell you something, for example. Yeah. If somebody kills someone, he has to pay, he has to be judged. Yeah. Whom does, whom does uh, the blood money be paid to? The, so, you have to pay, for example, now when you do a crime, you have to pay for two. You have to pay for the... Uh, the punishment because even if the other person... No, no, whom do you pay to? I'm not asking who is paying. I'm asking whom is it paid to? That's, that's a complex thing. That's what I'm it's saying. not complex. We have this in Islam as well. The blood money is paid to the victim's family. 
it's a, well, that's an Islam. I'm trying to. Even here, you pay to the court. You have to pay to someone, my friend. You have to pay to the court. When, start, when the kidnapper yeah. kidnaps someone, he demands a ransom. Yeah. Yes? So you, whoever is paying has to pay to the kidnapper. Yes? Uh, that's a kidnapping so there is always situation. someone. Yeah, I'm giving that's you a. a of course, I'm not saying Jesus. I'm not saying this scenario has got any. Yeah. I'm giving you an analogy that a ransom usually is paid to someone. So whom is Jesus' is sacrifice a ransom to? You have to pay. To whom? For breaking the rules. I'm not asking why. There's a big difference. Yeah. That's yeah. why the payment was made, blood money, and that is whom the payment was made to, the victim's family. Okay, so the question, the question I'm asking you is, if this is one of your main doctrines and you don't even know whom is Jesus paying to, then what's the point of him dying off and becoming a curse? Well, it's not an easy answer. I have to go and research it to replace okay, it. Fair enough. But with every uh, sin, there is a punishment. So that is... Uh, Actually, that's wrong. If you write Ezekiel 21, 20, 21, God says that if a wicked person turns away from his sins, yes, so the wickedness of the wicked, yes, his sins will be remembered no more, yes, as if it never happened. And he forgives, yes, and he even goes on to say that he will not die, means a spiritual death, he will not, he will be with God, that means, yes. So in the Bible itself, God says that he's able to forgive. And even in the New Testament, there is passages, yes. So the question is, why would God not be able to forgive like he does in the Old and the New Testament? Why does he need payment in blood? Doesn't make sense, does it? Let me answer that. Yeah, go because on. there was also in the Old Testament, God forgives, but he also asked for sacrifice. For unintentional sins. But he asked for a sacrifice. Yeah, unintentional sins. Not for intentional sins. For example, if you had committed murder or adultery, yes, you'll be stoned to death. You can't just give a goat and get away with it. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. So God has punishments for intentional sins. And God has these sacrifices in the temple, which the priest would do once a year, yeah. for unintentional sins. And even for their own, uh, uh, so for the sake of the priest as well. Yeah. And there would be one goat which would be let go. Yeah. Okay? The scapegoat, they call it. And that's where the name came from. So what I'm saying is this, that Jesus is payment by blood it's not something God has demanded. Yes? It's not something God can actually forgive. He doesn't need human sacrifice to forgive you. But this is something that Paul has advocated, not Jesus Christ. That's your opinion. I would respect that's your opinion. Read your Bible. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. It says, There is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Well, uh, well, that's already, already in Isaiah 52 as well. I mean, Jesus has to die to take sin. We, we no. both, I mean, we both know that. No. Not... Isaiah 53 is not about Jesus. It says, it talks about his children as well. It's not about Jesus. Go and read your scriptures because what happens is many times in order to appeal to the Old Testament, you decontextualize the Old Testament. So who Isaiah 52 is talking about? 53, sorry. Isaiah 53 is talking about uh, most likely uh, a king or is talking about uh, uh, Isaiah himself maybe. Yes? It might be talking about someone else but it wasn't Jesus Christ because whoever that was had, had progeny, had children. You see what I mean? Does Jesus have children? Where does it say that person? Open Isaiah 53. I'll show you why he says that. It says, I mean, we are children but does that... No, no. Open Isaiah 53. I'll show you to you. You're saying children. Yes, it talks about his his offspring. Christians, we are the children of God. And God has children. Whose children are you? The fathers or the sons? God. No, no, when you say God, the father or the son? Because the, the son, listen, yeah. the son is the son of God the Father. Yes? That's the son. Yes. The, the, the and there are many sons of God. He's not the only son. Distinguish between the son or sons of God. Adam is called the son. Who? Adam. Adam. In Luke chapter 3, verse 38. Check it out. It's got the definite article, the Son of God. Luke 3, 38. <clears throat> That's the first time you brought up the, Bi <laughs> the Bible.
There are many sons of God in the Bible. David is called the son of God. Ephraim is called the son of God. Yes? Yeah. Israel is called the son of God, the first begotten one. The son of God. The son of God. There you go. The son of God. Definite article. So you see, there are many sons of God. I don't think there's anything in the Bible that will prove unequivocally that this Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is God Almighty. Nowhere. It is always the opposite. You know, this is what I suggest to the Christians, that you should look at the explicit passages in the Bible rather than relying on the ambiguous ones. Because that is always should be the principle. When you have ambiguous statements, look if there are explicit ones. Uh, there is the Son of God, but that doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, uh, change anything. What do you mean, doesn't change anything? If there are more than one sons of God, then Jesus cannot be unique. No, he has to be two. The Son of Man and the Son of God. What do you mean, Son of Man? Who's, which man was Jesus the Son of? Jesus was the Son of Man. Which man? The Son of Human. Like who, who is his father? You said son of man, not woman. Yeah, yeah. So which man is he the son of? No, but that's a title that actually he will be called in the heaven. Jesus title in the heaven is the son of man. Daniel is called the son of man. Daniel. Do you want a cha do you want chapter and verse? Yeah. Daniel chapter 8. Verse uh, I think 18 or thereabouts. Daniel 8. 8 17, I think. If my memory serves me right. You see, if we just go by titles rather than going by what Jesus himself claimed, I think that would be much more productive. Do you agree? Read it, read it, what he says, go on. No, no, read it. What does he say? Which one you want? Daniel 8, 17. Doesn't matter, NIV, go on. No, read NIV, it's much better English, I think. Uh, 17. Okay. Daniel 8, yeah. 17. Oh, oh, he came near where I stood. I don't know the context, by the way. You can look at the context, no problem. And when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be division. I don't know the context. The context is here. An angel, I think angel Gabriel is speaking to yeah. him, yeah. to Daniel, and he's telling Daniel, yeah. That son of man is using that same yeah, yeah. title which you believe for, is for Jesus. So you see, Jesus again is not unique in that. He's a, he is a son of man, but not this son of man. Oh, you see, you're using that again. When it's the title, yeah. yes? This son of man. Okay, show me where he says the son of man for Jesus. Go on. Well, it is there, the son of man. <laughs> show me where he says, you, you, you said there's a definite article. Show me where he when says. When you will see the son of man coming on the cloud of the heaven. Yeah. This son of man. Yes. Not son of so, man. son of man. This son of yeah. man. Even if this son of man, yeah. which man? Jesus. Yes. I mean, I mean, He's the son of which man? No. At least Daniel has a father. Man. Jesus is the son of which man? man no man. He man. had no father. Human Get it, man? Beings. No, no. Jesus had no father. Yeah, but it represents. Ah, there. You see, now you're using the correct yeah. understanding. So, all when he says the son of man, it just means he's Bani Adam. He's, he's the son of Adam. That's all it means. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean he's anything other than a human. So, you are in fact no, it means using... Other. No, it doesn't mean. If it, that was the case, then Daniel would be special as well. No, no. Daniel was a son of man. Does it, even if he's a son, like I showed you, Adam is called the son of God. Yes? But you did not interpret yeah. that like, like the way Jesus is. You see? You made a no, distinction no. between Jesus, even if the title is same, yeah. you make a distinction for... So even if Daniel was called the son of man, yeah. you would just reject it, my friend. Yeah. So my, don't, don't play on the definite missing. article. No, no, my argument was missing. All what I wanted to do is, he has to be the son of man and the son of God at the same time. And yeah, but there are other God. people who are called the son of man and the son of God as well. No, so no. I don't know why the you're making person, a... The same person, both of them. Sorry? The same person okay. has the same title. I'll tell you what, I'll give you something even better than that. Uh, open Hebrews chapter 7 verse 3 and read that. This guy is even better than Jesus Christ. Hebrews 7. 3. Yeah, 
I, I came across this argument. Read it, if you don't I mind. I don't know much about it. Read it. But I know it is. I can read it for you. Yeah, please. Okay. The author, the author of Hebrew 7.3. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's Wikipedia, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Without father, without mother, without descent, descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest continually. The Son of God. Yes. Secondly, it says, no father, no mother, yeah. no genealogy, yeah. no beginning of days, no end of time. Yes? But made like, but unto, made like unto the Son of God. Yes? Yeah. Who's, uh, what is it? Whose priesthood will be for eternity or something? Uh, abide the priest continually. Yes. Yeah. So his, his priesthood will be eternal. Yeah. So who is that? I know it's a priest. It was a priest. Yeah. Melchizedek. Yeah. Melchizedek, the high priest. He is even better than Jesus Christ. Jesus at least had a mother. He has no mother or father. Jesus had two genealogies. Yes, even though he didn't have a physical father, he had two genealogies in the Bible. He has no genealogy. And he has no beginning of days and no end of time. So he's like the Alpha and Omega, which you say in, in, in Revelation. Which means he is much better. And he's also called like in the likeness of the Son of God. And his priesthood will be eternal. Yes? So he's much better than Jesus Christ even. Are you going to worship him? No, no. Why not? I, I tell you why. Yeah. Because I've heard this argument before. Although I don't remember the specification. Yeah. I probably read it in the past. I think I read it in the past, long time ago. Yeah. But it doesn't. Uh, literally said he doesn't have a mother or a father. It says that literally. No. Not oh, you mean you you don't interpret it literally? It's not literal. Yes. Trust me, if that was Jesus, you would interpret it literally. I would. Just because it is not Jesus. You want to interpret it metaphorically or whatever it is, yeah? We can skip this point. No, we, we, you see, there are many points I, I showed you. None of, none of them so far explicitly, none of the points that you made so far explicitly assert that Jesus is God Almighty. You know what is the best argument? Is by Jesus himself. In John chapter 17, verse number 3. Open it and see what Jesus says. What subject, what, what, uh, what's your point? My point there is Jesus is claiming that there is only one true God, there is only one who is the only true God, and that is his Father. Ah, so so that, that excludes everybody else yeah. from being God. So yeah, now, now we're discussing that Jesus is not God, or not divine? No, or? I've always been discussing Jesus is not God. Okay. okay? But I'm saying, so, so far, same. yeah, so far yeah. we discuss statements from other people, yeah. but now we go to the statement of Jesus himself, yeah. and which is explicit. You see, the, the principle should always be when there are ambiguous statements, yeah. yes, and there are explicit statements, you should always prefer the explicit ones over the ambiguous ones. Because like, like I showed you, the ambiguous ones, I can show you several different meanings to it. So yeah. everything that you would say, I would say, no, it can mean this, it can mean that. But when you have an explicit statement, there is no wiggle room, you see? Well, yeah, if, if we can determine if it's explicit, yeah, yeah. why not? So what's, what's, what do you want? Read John 7 and 3 and you tell me what Jesus says and what you understand by that. John, sorry, say 7. 17, 17. verse number 3. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Do you want me to read it? I just read it. If you, oh, okay. if you think it's wrong, read it again. Uh, and this is I added the Father in there because that's what it implies. And this is life so eternal, just... that they might know the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Yeah. What do you understand by that? That's Father? the one, right? Yeah. You can read it in context if you want, no problem. Yeah, I mean, I have to read it in context. But yeah, sure. This is life eternal. I wouldn't know a lot without reading context. Yeah, read it in context. Say a lot. No problem. Because this is Jesus actually praying to the Father. Yeah. And he's saying, This is eternal life that they may know you, 
the you here is the father. Yes? Let me read an IV. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is eternal life. That they know you. Yeah. Only true God. Sorry, brother. Is it okay? Christ, we're Christ. trying to keep a meter apart as much as possible. <laughs> okay. As I understood on top of my head without reading context. Yeah. What do you understand by it? So now he's going to prove something big. That he is, that there is the God who's talking to you is a true God. And Jesus Christ is sent from God. Yes. Yeah. So according to Jesus Christ in that passage, who is the only true God? The only God, yes. The Father. The Father, yes. yes? The Father. Uh, you can read, yeah, it's, in John, yeah. it's in John 17, 1, where he starts... It mentions the Father as well. He's praying to the Father. Did he say the Father? Yes. So it's the Father. Yes. Yeah. So if according to Jesus Christ, the Father is the only true God, yes? The term only means exclusive. Nobody else can be. Can there be anybody else if, if the Father is the only true God? Can anybody else? Can, can Jesus be God? Can the Holy Spirit be God? Can Melchizedek be God? Can, I don't know, anybody? Can Paul be God? Can anybody else be God? Sure, sure. But if you want to look at this verse, we don't know a lot. And we could explain it, no, there is no only but one God. No, this is Jesus saying. Yeah, yeah, so I it's know. not me saying or you saying. This is a testimony of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying only if I read this verse, yeah. I can conclude what you concluded. Okay. But if I read the whole Bible, I have no Whole Bible? Choice. Yes. I have no choice but to, include the, to, to uh, conclude that Jesus is also part of the Godhead. But you had so much chance to prove to me that Jesus is part of the Godhead or Jesus is God Almighty. Yeah. So far, you haven't given a no, single... No, you didn't answer me. You didn't ask me. Do you want me to... Uh, to give okay, you... go on. Give me something explicit and I would prefer it from Jesus because his words are about others. Okay. So show me something from Jesus' statement where he claims that he's Almighty God. Okay, I don't know verses, but I can tell you that... Okay, paraphrase it to me, we go can, We can go yeah. to it. Yeah, paraphrase it, go on. When he said, before Abraham, I am. Yeah, what does that used, mean? He used the same title. He used the same title that God uses. Do you know why, uh, I don't know what specific names. Yeah. That the God of Abraham used. So when he asked him, who sent me, saying, I am. Yes. This is, him. you, I'm assuming you only read the English translations. You did not look at the original Greek. Even the Old Testament original Greek, which is called the Septuagint, you did not look at that. Am I right? Yes. Okay, because in the original Septuagint, which is a Greek translation of the Hebrew, yes, in fact, which is the earliest existing uh, manuscripts of the Old Testament, yes, and it says in there, in uh, I think you are referring to Exodus 3:14. Uh, possibly it was yeah. in Exodus. I so in Exodus 3:14, it does not say just I am. It says, I am the one being. Yes, ego emi, yeah. ho on. Okay. But when they actually translate it or try to say that this is uh, mirroring the Old Testament in John 8:58, yeah. in John 8:58 is only half the sentence. It says, before Abraham was, I am. And it doesn't say the one being. Okay. What was the question that was asked to Jesus and why is he saying I am? Do you remember the context of uh, John 8:58? Yeah, he was uh, talking to the Jews, Jews, and uh, he said that I am. Uh, I saw Abraham or something like that. No, that came later on. But what was the question? I don't know the specific. Okay, question. so the context here is they were saying that the, they were talking about the Messiah to come. Yeah. Yes, and Jesus is responding to them. Yeah. Yes, that uh, he says that before Abraham was, I am. Like I said, it's uh, half the statement they use. Because he, he, in fact, saying, I am that Messiah whom Abraham was expecting or Abraham was uh, happy to see the days of this Messiah. Yeah. So when he's saying before Abraham was I am, he's saying even before Abraham came, God had already decreed that he's the Messiah. Do you see? He's not claiming to be God. In fact, the question wasn't about him being God at all. No, because they asked him, how are you... How are you yeah, they asked. Younger, how did you see yes. Abraham? And they told him before Abraham, I am. Yes, because he is saying that even before Abraham came, sorry, he's, before that he says, Abraham was happy to see my days. No, I'm no, paraphrasing. He said, read, read, read John 8 50. Read John 8 50 onwards. And you'll find the context. Because the whole context is about a Messiah, not whether he's God or not. 
why, why did they then, uh, when the Jews wanted to uh, stone him? Stone him and call yeah, because him. he's claiming to be the Messiah. For them, the Messiah is a very righteous person. He didn't, even, he couldn't even tell them who is his, who is his father. So they rejected him because they were expecting a Messiah from the line of David. When he has no father, no known father, they cannot trace him to David. So the reason they wanted to stone him is because they are saying that he is actually insincere. How would he know? How would they know that? Like I said, they're expecting a Messiah from the line of David. And they know, they know that he did not have a father. They know. He was just speak, he was talking to the, to the crowd. That's why I said, li listen to the context. 50, John, 50. John 8, 50 onwards. Read from there. Because the whole, the whole context is about Messiah, not whether he was God or not. John 8, 50, you said? 5, 0, yeah. It doesn't... Glory, if you have John 8 58, I'm sure you have got 50. Uh, 8, John 8 58? No, 50. 8, 5, 0. You don't have 850 in your book? How come you have 58 and no 50? I don't know, I'm just using online. Like this. Okay. Says, you, should, you should get one of these offline apps. Says, I'm not seeking glory for myself. And there is one who seeks it. And yeah. he is the judge. Go on, go on, carry on. Okay, you want to read it from here? Here it is. Only read it? Guys, do you want to move? Because we got a concert behind us. <laughs> you see, the Christians are allowed to pray. More than one, but the Muslims are not, unfortunately. Let's, shall we move, yeah? yeah sure. Is it okay we move that? Who's come? It's the second time we have to move. <laughs> Let's go. I think here is good, yeah? More? Yeah, I can still hear them. All right. You found it? Yeah, I'm reading. I'm reading through it. Okay. The father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. Yeah. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him. And you have seen Abraham? Verily, truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham born, was born, I am. So you see why, why Abraham rejoiced to see his days? So this was a prophecy yeah. to Abraham that a Messiah is to come. Yeah. And that's the reason he rejoiced. And that's when the Jews said that you're not yet 50 and you, are, you, already, have, uh, sorry, you already know about Abraham and you're before him and so on, yes? Yeah, but but here they don't mention the Messiah. They are not mentioning anything about the Messiah. Here. Even if you don't say Messiah, let's see. Abraham was uh, was knew the prophecy about Jesus. Whether yeah. whether he believed it as a Messiah or not, right now that is yeah. not the point. The point is about why he rejoiced. Why would Abraham rejoice to see his days? Okay. I don't okay. Know, is, is it a prophecy or is it just uh, it's happening? A, it's a prophecy to Abraham because Ab for Abraham is in future. But Jesus knew about Abraham from God Almighty, that he rejoiced his days. Well, that, my, point that's, is, that's look, my, po my point is that you cannot use the I am statement in John. Yes, and by the way, the I am statements are only found in the Gospel of John, but not the other three Gospels. Why? That's quite uh, worrying as well. The, the fact is you cannot use I am. When the, in Exodus 3.14, when the term I am is used, it doesn't stop that. There's a predicate. It says I am he. Yes, the one being. I'll show you the Greek if you want. Do you read Greek? No. No? Okay. And it shows you exactly in the, uh, in the Greek Old Testament, the correct context and the yeah. correct terminology. 
Anything else you got that will prove that Jesus is God? Oh, a lot of things. But this one, I, of course, I'm not going to agree with you. Uh, you don't have to agree with me. Yeah, agree with the Old Testament brick. Yeah, I know that. Because but Exodus 3.14 doesn't say I am only. Yeah, yeah, it says sure. I am he. Ego emi ho on. They wanted to stone him because he thought he's, he was saying he's Messiah. There's no mention about the Messiah. Actually, the reason they wanted to stone him is because he's saying, I was before Abraham, yes. And yeah, so I am God. Whatever this statement was, the whole, the whole question was that, sorry, the question that was asked to him was nothing to do with God. So why would they assume he's, God, he's claiming to be God? Yeah, no, because. You just read the context, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Even if he's not the Messiah, yeah. okay, which. I interpreted it as, even if he's not the Messiah, he's still claiming to be a prophet who was prophesied by Abraham. Okay. You see what I mean? And when he say, I am, uh, I don't know much about this one, but he said, I am the Alpha, the Omega. Yeah, I showed you already. This was the one? Yeah, Melchizedek. This, right. this proves that. All Anything right. else? Of course, uh, many things. Give me one that is uh, explicit. Make sure it's from Jesus, though. No? Was it James or uh, yeah. for God? Uh, when he was resurrected, and no, no, sir, they told him, "Show us the Father." Yeah. And he said, "Well, you've seen, you know me all this time. I tell you, you've seen the Father." What What do you mean by that? What do you understand by that? Are you saying the Father looks like Jesus? No, I say that he's divine. No, no, he didn't say he's divine. He said, "If you have, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father." Yeah, which means seeing him. Yeah. Seeing him, yeah. yes. Do you think he looks like the father? No, no, because Jesus um, is in unity with the father. And that's no, the Jesus is not in unity with the father. Yeah. He says, he's one. if he was in unity with the father, the father yeah. wouldn't forsake him on the cross. No, no, but he is one. You cannot. Uh, How can he be one? He was, he was forsaken on the cross. You cannot neglect that Jesus said, "I am with the father. I am one." Yeah, but that is metaphorical. He also says. I and the disciples are one with the Father yeah. in John 7. Are you going to worship the disciples as well? No, no. Then why don't you no, no, use the same, say, why don't you use the same, uh, what he said, so logic? Be one, like I am one with the Father. So exactly. So he's one with the Father, yes. just like the disciples say, him are one. So that's a unity with the Father already. Exactly. So Can when you talk about, that? when you talk about unity, let's say they were one in purpose. Yes? Like for example, if a football... Yeah, but you're adding now. No, I'm not adding. I'm one, he could say I am uh, I'm no, one. No, hold on. Uh, Actually... You added by saying that he's one with the Father. I added, you said? You added in the, in the sense of they're one in essence. They're not one in essence. Let's go to that. Can you give me... Uh, it's John, with, John uh, 10, 30. I'm not a debater or anything. John 10? 30. Let's the Is the one where he says, my Father and I are one? Is that the one? Yes. Yes. I and the Father are one. Yeah. Yes. Go on, read it. Because he's not claiming to be God then. If you read John 10, 34. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. Yeah. So he's not, he was not saying it. Uh, no, no, don't, don't count your chicks yet. Complete it. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? Yeah. Want me to continue? Continue, please, yeah. We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that claim. Because you the are... The claim of the Jews. Yeah, you are a mere man. Claiming to be, to be God. God. Carry on. Carry on. That's a, the, he responds to that allegation of blasphemy. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? You see what I mean? Yeah. What, is that, what do you understand from that? That was a smart answer from that. No, no. What is he referring to? He's saying, is it yeah. not written in, in, in the law, means the Torah? Correct. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they are that, not to that, that you are gods. So yeah. God is saying, yeah. to whom? This to is... The Jewish people. Yes. Yeah. To, to the judges in the Jewish, uh, among the Jews. Oh, yes. This yeah. is in Psalm chapter, uh, chapter 82, yeah. verse number 6. He's saying, you are gods, yeah. the sons of the Most High. Okay, gods. now carry on, re re carry on reading. What about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own mm -hmm. and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said I am God's son. Son, exactly. Yeah. So you see, he's not claiming to be God. Yeah. He's claiming to be God's son. And the Jewish people understand what he means when he says God's son. Okay, these are the righteous people, the people who are God-fearing. They are called God's children. 
God's son, and so on. Do you understand? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can. Uh, right. You can. Uh, so once again, he's. Interpret it like that. No, no, he said it. He said, yeah, yeah. God Himself, God Himself calls the judges gods. Yeah. But all I'm saying yeah. is, I am God's son. Yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's not claiming to be God. Next. No, no, he didn't say in that particular way. He did. He said, I'm God's there son. There was a scenario. There were people want to stone him. Yeah. Why? Right. Because he's, he's, they, they are saying you're blaspheming, they're yes. saying you're God. Yes, and what did he, how did he defend himself against that? How would he get out of that situation? He did. No, if he said, yes, I'm God, he will be stoned and he'll be dead. So you so you didn't lie. It so was, so are, was, you saying, are you saying was, God is scared of his own creation? It was a true answer. It wasn't a lie. It was very smart. Like when they said to them, who has no sin, let that woman, let let pick up the stone and stone woman. He was a very smart person, I mean, Jesus. So you are, in yeah. fact, saying that that is not an explicit statement that he's God? No, no. He's saying Which is what I asked you for, remember? They understood he was God. No, no, no. They, they misunderstood that when he said, I and the Father are one, they misunderstood and they alleged that he is yeah. blaspheming. Do you see what I mean? So Jesus responds to them, yes? By saying that God himself calls yeah, yeah. the judges gods. And all I'm saying is I'm God's son. And he called many gods. You see, God. why did, when, when God called those people in yeah. Psalm 82, 6, why did they not get stoned? When he calls them God, why did yeah. they not get stoned? Oh, yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? Course, because yeah. the, the Jewish people understood the difference between almighty God and just a God. Yes. You see what I mean? Yeah. There are many people called. In fact, Moses, Moses is called Elohim to the Pharaoh. Yes, Elohim means God. Yes, to the Pharaoh. Why did they not stone Moses or say he was blaspheming? You see what I mean? Because Moses made the law. No, 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 no. Moses was given the law. He didn't make the law. Yes. So please understand and do not decontextualize because here Jesus is not claiming to be God. Next. Well, the people understood he was claiming to be God, but then there was a situation he has to be stoned. We already responded to that. Next. Uh, when he was in front of the Caesar and he told him and uh, when he said uh, are you the son of God uh, they asked him he said uh, I let me go through it can you help me go into that verse you uh, know it I'm sure you know it I know the context but I don't remember the, Mark, I believe, the passage Mark. even that is not claiming to be God you see, the Jews made many allegations of blasphemy against him. That doesn't mean it's true. No, and Kiyafa actually he split his robe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They wanted to kill him by hook or by crook. But just because the Jews made allegations against him, do you remember what I said? I want an explicit statement from Jesus, not from the Jews. Because the Jews wanted him dead anyway. But when he was risen and uh, one of his disciples, I forgot his name, he told him, uh, my Lord and my God. Yeah, Thomas. Thomas, yes. Yes. It doesn't mean he's calling him Almighty God. My Lord and my yes. God. My Lord, like I said, Elohim, yeah. the term Theos yeah. is used in the in the New Testament, used for the Satan, is used for Paul, yeah. is used for King Herod, is used for um, angels. Yeah. So the term Theos doesn't mean he's God Almighty. Yeah. So and please do not use that. Do not use things which are ambiguous and also used for other people. And that doesn't make Jesus Almighty yeah. God. And when you will what? see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven yeah. to judge the world, what's, what's that about? There are other people who judge the world as well. Uh, the 12 I mean, tribes of Israel yes. are going to be judged by the 12 disciples. Yeah, yeah. Does it mean they are God? No. Give you me something have, unique, my friend. Abundance. I mean, these, are all these are all ambiguous. All of all the ones. The one I gave you, John 17.3 is explicit, but you don't want to... Uh, can any prophet, let's, let's put it another way, if I yeah. cannot convince you this way, I'm not convinced you, if I not, if I not prove my case this way, can a, just a normal person uh, say what Jesus is saying? Yeah, like I, I told, like I told you, can. Melchizedek, in the case of Melchizedek, okay, let, okay. Let's, that is, I don't know if that is not God, I don't know what is, yes? Well, he, he didn't say anything. They were talking about it. That's why I understood when I read uh, the verse when I was there. But he, uh, so what is it that makes Jesus God? Tell me something that Jesus said that makes him God. Oh, I told you a lot. Many yeah, but things. all of them were not unique. I showed you other people who were similar, saying similar things or in similar position. I mean, you know what? What did? You 
you have because what Jesus says yeah. is usually not just because he's saying it now, it's because he's referring to it uh, from the Old Testament. So he's no, even in the Old Testament. Testament. In the Old Testament, no one expected the Messiah to be God. No one. Trust me. The Jews, you know the Jews are still waiting for the Messiah? We Muslims, we have already acknowledged Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Yes? So we are not waiting for any Messiah. We are waiting for the second coming. But we already acknowledge that he's... But the Jews are expecting, they're still waiting for the Messiah. And even that Messiah will come, he'll be their king. He won't be their God. So why would you interpret something that is not mentioned in the Old Testament that the Messiah will be God when it never says that why would you assume that no because as I said there is a lot of evidence I mean you, you're saying you tried ambiguous, but there's overwhelming overwhelming uh, uh, verses in the Bible bro that point to that bring any words that where it's claimed that Jesus is God and I'll give you something an explanation which is rational which is from your Bible and which rejects any claim of his divinity anything that you can think okay, of Jesus said Whenever uh, I think two or three of you together in yeah. my name, I'm with you. And how does that make him God? Well, he is omniscient in this case, you say. He's everywhere. He's not everywhere. Because, yeah, if every it, is, it is a metaphoric way of saying that if, if, you, look at, if you look at the Old I Testament... I know I can't convince you. I'll give you... No, no, it's not me. I'm, I'm asking for explicit yeah. statement yeah. from Jesus. What you're telling me is ambiguous. So these are metaphoric ways of saying that if you follow my... Uh, my, my way, for example, he says that if uh, if there is more than one person, sorry, if there is uh, uh, two witnesses, then that witness will be acknowledged and accepted. But if only one person gives testifies, then his witness will not be accepted. No, no, we're talking about different things. Now I'm talking about the same thing. Why this two or three is there? It is a reference to the number of witnesses. Okay, imagine this. You are a devout person. You're all by yourself. Why is Jesus not with you? Why does it need two or three people? It could be, I mean, I don't you see know. what I mean? I it only I goes back, it reflect, I've looked into this and uh, uh, what do you say, the context of that is very clear. Jesus was saying that if you obey this commandment of God, yeah. that for, uh, for giving true testimony, you need at least two people. But he will be with them. And can yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. With, so if, with someone doesn't mean you're literally with them. Yes? Otherwise, imagine this. When he says Jesus was forsaken by his God, yes? What do you understand that? God separated from him, literally? When it was when on the cross? Me, yeah, on the, on the cross. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Do you think he literally abandoned him? Forsaken me. I don't know if it's completely ab means abandoned him. Yes, look in the dictionary. The but term forsake and abandon are synonymous. Yeah, yeah. He was separated for that. Do you think that is literally? Uh, literally, probably yes. Then the Trinity broke? No, it's what Yes. If the Trinity only has two people, then it's no more Trinity. Okay? You see what I mean? You can't have it your way every time. You either say it's metaphoric or you say literal. When you say literal, the Trinity broke literally. The Trinity, the Trinity has three. Yes, but Jesus three entities. Was, yeah, but Jesus was here. No, but he says he abandoned him. What does abandon mean? When you forsake someone, that means you go away from that person. You abandon that person. Like the way when Abraham had abandoned Hagar in the desert. Yes? He left yeah. her there and he went away. Yeah, that is what abandoning means. Yeah. It has multidimensional... Uh... Well, I gave you the dimension, which is the most meaningful here. <laughs> okay. More In fact, I'm, I'm helping you out here. Otherwise, you will interpret it as the Trinity broke. I, I don't agree with that. I'm well, then you go by I the mean, metaphoric. I'm really tired a lot, but... Yeah, no, that's fine. But I'm trying to, yeah. as much as I try to remember other uh, verses. Yeah. Uh, I'm giving you explicit verses, which you don't want to take on both but you're going for all the ones yeah, no, but they are, are ambiguous I mean, they are overwhelming. there I mean, are overwhelming verses where Jesus Christ says that he's not God very clearly for example when he says I by myself can do nothing to me that doesn't sound like a God yes when Jesus is praying when Jesus is praying in fact when Jesus was asked the question yes how to pray he shows them how to pray and whom does he direct the prayer to I don't know exactly. Only the Father. The Father yeah. Yes, our you know Father the Lord's Prayer. Heaven. Exactly. He didn't say our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in heaven. Yeah, yeah. He says our Father in heaven. Yes. So only one person, only one individual. Yeah, but you're ignoring lots of... As I, I didn't know. ignore. I, 
I, I gave you the response for all of them. What do you mean ignoring? Yeah, yeah, but that's an, you're, you're just... Bring me, my friend, trust me, you bring anyone from the Bible, yes? I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying. giving you explicit verses, but you're denying them. But you're bringing ambiguous verses, which I've already refuted, okay. all of them. I, I'm not, I'm not going to go to the Quran and uh, to uh, the Islam to, to prove my point. I'm just trying to stick yet with my... Well, I just use the Bible to prove the point. <laughs> yeah, if I go to the Quran, bye-bye. <laughs> No, Actually, Quran. while you're here, let me give you a passage from the Quran and you tell me if that makes sense to you. Okay, I'll listen to it. Let's no see. problem. Have you looked into Islam at all? Oh, yeah, I read a little bit about the Quran. Yes. You've read the Quran? Yeah, not all of it. Uh, okay. So, what do you think of the message of Islam from what you have read so oh, far? Oh, you're not going to like it. Oh, well, go on. I, I don't believe in it. Try him, try you don't believe in it because. Because I don't believe in it. So because. Uh, you know the message of the Quran in terms of the oneness of God, indivisible God? Is exactly the message yeah, of Jesus God, Christ. God. It could be a different you, do you know the language of Jesus Christ? He spoke few languages. Yeah, what was his main language? He spoke uh, Hebrew, Aramaic. Yeah, Aramaic was his main. Greek. Aramaic was his main language. Yeah. Do you know what they say for God in Arab uh, in Aramaic? What is what? the term for What is the term for God in Aramaic? Uh, you won't like I it. I don't know. Elohim. Uh, you won't like it. Allaha. Allaha. Allah. Okay. How different is that to Allah? Except for one letter at the end, identical. Yeah, so imagine, imagine yeah. Jesus yeah. calling out when he was on the cross, he might have most likely called out Allaha, Allaha, yeah, yeah. Lama Sabaktani, or even if it's Ilahi, Ilahi, yeah. it's almost identical to the Arabic. Yes? What do you think is the name of God in the New Testament? But I tell you, I'll just let you comment with that. Yeah, I mean, go on. The Arab, the Christian. The yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, the Arabic world, they yeah. all refer to, the, to God as Allah. Absolutely. Are you from the Middle East? I am. Which part? I'm Lebanese. From this uh, gentleman. <laughs> oh, are you Lebanese? Yes. Okay, yeah. mashallah. Hey, yeah, how are you? Good to see you. Good, good. That's good. Yeah, you're right. They use Alhamdulillah, inshallah. You know, because they use the term Allah. And this was even before the Prophet. I don't know. Because his, his father's name was Abdullah. I don't know. How do you think that came from? Oh, okay. I agree with that. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. So the term Allah is something which is not come with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but before him. The Arabic Bible in Genesis 1:131 is 31 times so, the name Allah Subhanahu yeah. So anyway, there is lots of evidence that Jesus uh, is God, and, and you, 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 and that's not important. John, you tried, but, but you, you failed, tried unfortunately. Any other person that can say these. Second. Who else can say these th these things that Jesus said? You know, instead of you, hold on. Things? Instead of you comparing with prophet, why don't you compare it with God? Which God will say, "I can of myself do nothing"? Which God begs because His God? Wait, wait, wait. Which God begs His God to give Him glory? Yes. Can you imagine a God without His glory? No, no, because the, the Godhead is governed by love and non-contradiction. So it's it's, all but, but hold on. Do you not agree that God has glory? God has glory. Yes. Of course. Did Jesus have glory? So why is he asking God for glory in John 17, 5? Because uh, it's a unity and uh, it's governed by love. And no, no, you, you misunderstood the question. Yeah. If God already has glory, does he need to ask for it? Yeah, yeah. But the only person who needs to ask for it, who does not have glory. We do not understand. First of all, <laughs> by God entering his creation, that's... Uh, that itself is a contradiction. That is something which is... We cannot explain every single thing that God does. Well, I'm not asking you to explain, explain every single thing, at least explain the things which God told us about himself. For example, if God tells us that he doesn't die and you said he died on the cross, then whom do I believe, God or you? No, no, I know you're using these ones for a debate, but that's, I'm not sure. That's in your Bible. It. Hold on, I'm hold on. I'm not sure, to be honest, you're convinced with that argument yourself. Well, look, if you don't want to be convinced, that's, be good for it's, video, but that's it's, my, it's not my job here yeah. to see whether you are 100% convinced because ultimately it's your decision. Yeah. I cannot impose it on you. But if you're going to just say, I don't believe in it without giving me any rational reason for your, your belief, I will say you're just in denial, my friend. You see what I mean? Well, you can say that. If you're going to say, if you're going to, if you're going to be in denial of the explicit passages in the Bible, yeah. which clearly say that God doesn't die, and you still insist that he died by his own creation, that too, yes, to add, uh, to add injury, sorry, uh, to, to, to add salt to the injury here, that makes it even worse, my friend. Yes, because Jesus consistently is telling everyone that he, there's somebody greater than him. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I obey. Yeah. Yes, my judgment. Yes, yeah. sorry, what, what I hear and my judgment is, uh, is just. 
and then he says, if I testify about myself, yes, that, testi that testimony will be disregarded. Can you imagine God saying this, that his testimony will be disregarded? Yeah, yeah, but that's, yes? Yeah, but these, as I said. All this point to not Jesus as God, but the opposite of that. So where Jesus the teacher incarnation? I mean, you can use these arguments, as I said, you can use them for your... Uh, but it's not a I mean, I'm, I'm I'm loads of you know, throughout this discussion we had, I don't know, it's been what, two hours nearly? Yeah, I'm tired actually. Yes. Tired. Yeah. Just, I mean, you know, thanks for your time. But My throughout this discussion, is, yeah. I've only used the Bible, if you have realized. Okay? Yeah, so I'm not using, you, I'm, I'm not, I'm not using, yeah. what do you say, the Quran, I'm not using just logic itself yeah, yeah, yeah. or just philosophy. I used my argument and substantiated it from the Bible. Yeah. Yes? So it, you cannot just say it's for the camera or just to convince you. No, I use, use I use rational arguments from, yeah, from yeah. your Bible. Yeah, but you, you, you're using some stuff for the camera. It might, might look fancy on the camera. Well, that's your opinion. But, um, yeah, of course, my opinion. The whole purpose of this discussion is not for me to show off, but to educate people. That's the reason we record it. Yeah. You know? And we have been recording here only for three or four years maximum. Before that, in Speaker's Corner, and I've been coming here for many years, we didn't have these cameras here. Okay? Yeah. So before the cameras came, I used to give the same arguments. And after the cameras came, I still use the same arguments. Not very much yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, no, they are very, very, uh, very uh, common arguments. Yeah. That is there anywhere huh? Jesus peace upon him, teach incarnation? Yeah, yeah, I will never be able to convince you. <laughs> I've seen your. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing. I hope you. One of your videos online. I have a new. I laughed a lot. Uh, <laughs> and if you have the same problem. I, I have a new channel. Jesus, Islam Jesus, Defender Jesus Yahya. is your God. Yeah. I, Islam Defender Yahya. See you. Has the legs and the eyes yeah. and can move. All right. Well, and nice he, talking he to you. Has, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. I want to go to sleep, actually. Uh, yes. <laughs> have some rest. All right. yeah, yeah, Watch the videos if you can. It's on SC Dawa okay. and I think it's okay. Sam Dawa. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, John. جزاك الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته